everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, reason why I'm struggling to do these late evening videos is because we end up kind of being caught in like a little bit of a model cusp here, where we're right on a transition between models and then these tropical updates, they occur about every three hours. So, usually two o'clock, five o'clock, eight o'clock. So, really the best time to do a video is just after eight o'clock. I like to get you guys the, the most up-to-date information that I can. So, We'll be, of course, talking about Ernesto, but we also have to address the severe weather threat that we're going to be having over the next couple of days here. There even is a slight risk tonight, and that's going to be mainly for damaging winds and hail, but there also is a 2% tornado threat with a reported tornado earlier today. While this threat is not going to last for too much longer, I'm really interested in these next couple of days. I did take a little time to look in advance for these setups here. I'm a little bit interested in uh, the Omaha and Lincoln setup for tomorrow. There is currently a 2% risk and it's a very broad one. Would a 5% risk be introduced? Hard to say. Obviously, I'm not a part of the Storm Prediction Center, but would it surprise me if they did it? I'm not going to lie. Maybe not. But uh, damaging wind and hail threat definitely seem to be the dominant threats once again. If they do introduce a 5% there could be a small chance, not a great chance that we may see an enhanced risk, but definitely not off the table either. As we go towards day three, things are a little bit more uncertain. I definitely think we transition into more of a linear style storm system here. And with that comes the increased threat of damaging winds. This is typical for this time of year. So pretty much areas that are expecting it, Chicago, Peoria, Springfield, not new weather to you guys during the summertime this happens relatively often i'd say we've uh, done a few live streams here this year in regards to the uh, wind threat here how significant will be is still in question though and we'll be figuring that out over the next couple of days here so let's go ahead and get a look at the models here and we'll start out of course by looking up towards the upper level jet here and this is where the game begins so to speak got this trough out here towards the northwest and this feature is going to come along and with that we will begin to see the chance of showers and storms relatively early in the day i would say depending on how it goes we could end up uh going live maybe early afternoon so probably be one of the last lives before i get back to work because i just got called in off season is officially over for me but as time goes on here you can see that this storm system begins to move out to the east begins to mature a little bit we have a we're i'm anticipating a uh, leftover mcs as we go into early thursday morning here we end up getting a little bit of a reload here and then towards the early afternoon we'll probably see another mcs or maybe even a uh, squall line potentially even a bow echo as we head later into the day here and then eventually as that clears out we may see the threat transition a little bit further over towards the mid-atlantic probably beginning to lose a little bit of steam at this point we may see a new setup begin to emerge over here also towards the mississippi delta as we head towards friday evening maybe even friday afternoon only thing is we only got 60 hours on this model here so looking at the mid levels here we're going to kind of go a little bit more in depth here take a look at all levels and from what you can see here Already got an MCS that's going to be lingering around the morning towards our severe weather area for tomorrow. And we begin to see an amplification a little further off to the south. So I'm starting to think that maybe a little further south of Omaha and Lincoln could be the point of interest here. We do see uh, the short waves that kind of coincide with that evidence there. Like I said, I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be a point of interest earlier in the day and then we're going to see a transition a little further to the south maybe towards the kansas nebraska line maybe kansas missouri line especially towards maybe northwest kansas or northwest missouri and northeastern kansas excuse me we see this uh we see likely mcs begin to develop overnight and then we see some resurgence by the time we get towards the afternoon with a new set of storms beginning to fire later and then eventually I'm thinking another line will start to pop off morning time around maybe central parts of Missouri and also even south central parts of Illinois. We'll have to see how that uh, progresses as we go into Friday there. Also, while we're looking through all the wind profiles, we're also doing the same thing on the HRRR here, which is on our bottom left corner here. So 
Here's a key component to tornado genesis. This is the question we're all asking right now. This model is relatively old at this point, so this may, so a disclaimer this may change. But as I can as I'm looking right now, we have a window early in the afternoon where we have maybe enough low level jet to get a quick spin up or two over here. So we get later into the afternoon that low level jet does kind of kick back up. And this is why my tornado interest is kind of peaked a little bit. The tornado senses are tingling, if you will. It's because of the fact that we have a pocket of low level jet over here that's at about 30 to 40 knots, which is just where you would want to be in regards to tornado genesis. You can obviously get better low level shear with it being stronger, but Considering the time of year where low level jet isn't always exceptional, especially around this time of day, which would be towards mid afternoon, towards late evening, this is actually pretty good. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. I do think that, again, I do think that damaging wet wind threat does kind of pick up later into the evening, maybe overnight. It really just depends on uh, other parameters here, which we will be looking at as we go forward here. So getting into the thermo side of things, Obviously, we know it's going to be hot out towards the heart of the country. We already talked about that in our Outlook videos and most of our weekly and um, two-week forecast videos that we've talked about recently. So really, we're more so looking how looking at how the moisture is going to coincide with this event here. And we do have ample moisture here, of course. The Gulf of Mexico moisture is making a pretty good surge all the way up into our area of interest here, getting 70 degree plus dew points here. So again, with that low level jet, with the moisture in play, it's really the upper level shear that's not that impressive, but it's still, I would still say that it's sufficient enough to get some storms off and maybe a couple supercells, kind of hard to say right now. But like I said, it would not surprise me if we end up getting a 5% tornado threat here. And really this isn't the most impressive parameter that I've seen here. We're gonna go back to the HRRR in a second here on the bottom left to take a look at the instability that we have because that's really what kind of captures my attention for the following days. And even on Thursday, we still have a really impressive amount of moisture involved as well. We already know it's hot over here. So we're gonna have plenty of uh, warm moist air. We have the buoyancy, we have our trigger mechanism as well. So I do think that storms are going to continue to progress into Friday. I wouldn't be surprised to see a slight risk on Friday. Like I said, looking at the model data that I'm looking at right now, it's a little too early to tell. Looking at longer range guidance, you can kind of see it as well. But what catches my eye the most, again, like I said before, HRRR will be right here in bottom left, is the instability or the CAPE, convective available potential energy. Usually you look for about a thousand joules per kilogram basically this little area in the dark blue right here for uh, stronger storms to develop severe weather, even tornadoes. Now watch what happens as we get into the day tomorrow. Look at how explosive we get here. We're looking at about, I would say close to 5,000 joules per kilogram along this little region here. The area, keep in mind, like I said, the area in the blue here is about a thousand. Once we start getting into the yellows, we're getting to 2,000. Orange is getting towards 3,000. Once you get to the red, that's 3,000 plus. And dare I even say anything else beyond that? Legend's right here, just, just in case you want to use that as reference too. But a lot of instability available tomorrow. So good reason to believe that it could be a pretty notable day for severe weather. We'll take a look at some skew tees in just a minute here. But as we head into the following day on Thursday, again, ample amount of instability, especially over towards southern parts of Illinois, central parts of Missouri. So we could have a couple of different areas of interest right here. I'm kind of favoring this mode over here towards the south a little bit more. And then of course, as we go further along here, I do think we'll see a resurgence of Cape push further to the east, maybe even the Tennessee Valley and uh, southern parts of the Ohio Valley getting into the action here. So let's go back, rewind a little bit, and actually click a couple of soundings here. And we're going to start with Wednesday here. I'm going to click this little area just to the south and west of Omaha here. And like I said, what really kind of catches my eye here more than anything 
is definitely the low level jet as we mentioned before when you see a little curving uh looping hodiograph like this that's usually really impressive signal like i said when you see the upper level winds kind of doing this though it kind of leads me to have uh, some questionability in regards to this there might be some issues with uh inhibition as well could be a little bit of a cap involved you can kind of see that based on our skew t here but in any case though let this be an example that we do have the potential for some pretty strong storms here you can also tell that we're going to have most likely a northeastern component movement with these storms as well a couple other things to make note of here and of course i'm nerding out a little bit at this point is that the uh spread between the surface temp and the dew point is actually pretty considerable considering the fact that normally during the summertime we'll see a disparity between the two that's about 10 sometimes 15 degrees we're well within 10 so it kind of piques my interest keep in mind that each model kind of acts differently if i were to compare this to the h triple r which you can actually switch over to here we're looking a little bit different there's a little bit of a cool bias with the nam but if we can make our comparison here with the HRRR here compared to the uh, NAM 3 kilometer, you can see much bigger disparity between surface temp and dew point. However, interesting thing to note is the cloud bases would are intended to be a little bit lower, which is kind of interesting. And there's not much in the way of inhibition here. So interesting look from the models here, something I'm going to kind of look into a little bit more as time goes on. But in any case, though, we go to the following day here, looking at Thursday. I don't think the tornado threat's gonna be as high. We're really gonna be looking more so for damaging winds. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna say this little pocket right here towards maybe central parts of Illinois. Probable hazard type does look like it could be tornado. There is some good surface to one kilometer shear here, just sufficient enough, but I'm really thinking damaging winds are gonna kind of take over here. Cloud bases are low, which is interesting, and good directional shear as well. So, could be a uh, Thursday could be a wild card here. So, could be a couple of streams on the way just from that alone. So, that being said, we'll keep things rolling here, and we're gonna go ahead and take a final look at what our composite reflectivity, basically our simulated radar, could look like over the U.S. over the next couple of days. So, while of course we're looking at severe weather for the next couple of days here, we do have a pretty good area of storms going on over here towards Colorado and also parts of northwestern Nebraska. Now as time goes on, of course, here's that MCS that we were talking about. There's our confirmation right there. And then a little bit later in the day is when we would expect our storms to fire. Interestingly enough, that low level jet starts to peak when this cluster starts to form here. So there very well could be a more notable threat at nighttime. I was expecting a little bit of development to go on here. There could be just enough capping here to stop that. But eventually it does look like that cap is anticipated to break from either the HRRR and the um, NAM 3 kilometer here. So we'll see this congealed into a line. It comes an MCS again for Thursday. And then we see some redevelopment later in the evening behind that. It actually looks like this could be another overnight event, which will be interesting. Maybe we will be able to cover that. Maybe we won't. Uh, time will only tell with that. NAMs, keep in mind, we're mainly only just looking at the NAM at this point. A little bit of HRRR sprinkled in here and there. But here's that line of storms that I was anticipating developing, eventually moving its way over towards the Mississippi River Valley and then eventually maybe even into the southeast as we go through the day on the Friday maybe even Saturday after that so uh, interesting times in regards to severe weather here going to be a lot more to talk about there as well switching gears now we're taking a look at tropical storm Ernesto Ernesto is now up to a 65 mile an hour tropical storm still anticipated to become a maxed out cat to hurricane with the potential of maybe even becoming a major hurricane in time here there are still some issues that it's running into right now, which is limiting its strengthening. Also, its interaction with the islands over here as we are staring down an imminent landfall for Puerto Rico this evening here. But 
as we continue to go forward, we're expecting, like I said before, a maxed out Cat 2 storm right on the cusp of becoming a major hurricane. It will be our second major hurricane of the year. This is our fifth named storm, of course. Uh, but this is the current track right now. And the spaghetti models have been pretty consistent with keeping Bermuda just about in the line, just about square in its sights here in the line of fire. Uh, the interesting thing is where we start to get towards the intensity model, especially over the next 48 hours. We're expecting this thing to really start to pick up in strength, especially once it starts to make that northward turn here. The real question is when it will take that northward turn. The storm's forward speed is a big factor as well with its uh, current west-northwest movement at 18 miles an hour. It's still moving at a pretty good clip, not quite like it was yesterday, but I think this is going to pretty much uh, lock in a either close land uh, close pass or a landfall for Bermuda itself here I do think this might be something we could also live stream we'll have to see how that goes I try I got to try to get a little bit more in the way of sources over there so that way I can get the proper amount of information we would need in order to cover the event but if so I'd like to do it but in any case though if we keep things rolling here, we can actually look at some model data here to see just what could be ahead of of Ernesto here. I was about to call it Debbie. And this is an interesting model I found here. This is taking a look at the sea surface temperatures. This is, of course, in Celsius. But if you do a rest, rough estimation here, we're looking at almost 85 degrees plus right now in regards to the sea surface temperatures here more than sufficient enough to help this storm keep growing as time goes on here somewhere around here in the midst of all this chaos is going to be bermuda here and look how warm the water is even as we go further and further off to the north here this could even make its way all the way over towards the nova scotia region towards canada so as we head towards the week in canada you might need to be keeping an eye on this as well just how this is going to look as time goes on is still questionable most likely at this point, it's going to weaken a little bit and probably become extra tropical or um, post tropical, as it's now called. Uh, extra tropical is a term that maybe only the OGs know. But in any case, though, definitely need to be watching if you're over towards Newfoundland and Nova Scotia as well. One thing that has been kind of weakening this storm a little bit has been wind shear, and we're going to continue to see that be the case, especially after it makes landfall towards Bermuda. This trough is going to help kick this storm out. And like I said, it could make a close pass or maybe a landfall, but there's also a chance that this may get kicked out to sea and torn apart out there in the open waters. But still a lot of questions left to be answered in regards to that. Uh, as far as the environment is concerned with dry air compared to moisture dry air has been kind of inhibiting the storm but as it makes that turn north it that's when it really starts to get that opportunity to grow you can see it just based on the iso bars here just how this has really started to ramp up at this point and you can see that there's plenty of moisture within this environment not as much in the way of dry air we still may see some effect on the left side of the storm as time goes on course as we go further up to the north we're going to start to see more dry air and wind shear begin to uh, kind of eat away at the storm a bit but it still could maintain its strength so actually getting a look at its strength as we continue to go forward here this is us also getting to take a look at the uh, estimated minimum low pressure here and the maximum winds so right now of course we're a little bit behind schedule but you can see that we're getting right about where we are right now by the time we get towards 8 a.m., I'm expecting this to be a hurricane at this point. With a estimated low pressure around 985 millibars, we continue to go forward. Watch how the pressure drops and those winds begin to go up. As time goes on, it would not surprise me if we make a close pass to 100 knots. In fact, there it is right there. So this would make this a Category 3 storm according to the uh, HWR. It's a very reliable hurricane model. So that's why I'm kind of like, I'm not sure if this makes it to major, but I wouldn't rule it out. Another thing to make note of whenever you get these bigger storms that get towards that major hurricane process or that gets that major hurricane status, they go through a process called an eyewall replacement cycle. And that could uh, weaken the storm temporarily and then allow it to strengthen really quickly. So the storm could also cycle. That's not uncommon at all. It's something that we have to keep an eye on. But that being said, that's all I got for you guys on this video here. 
thanks for again for uh, having me get to helping me get to a thousand here here's to the next one let's keep it moving until next time it's been tired metalhead weatherman you guys have an awesome rest of your night